Good afternoon. Sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hope you are doing well. So today, the you know, in the uh, following up on what Vink has been speaking about this morning on collaboration, uh, the goal is really try to understand if satellite IoT is something that you guys can use today. Uh, if you can really go out to your customer and say, hey, I have a nice solution, we should be using it. Um, so, but to do that, I need your help. Uh, so, I don't know if you've ever been using Slido. It's a live poll mechanism. Uh, so, what I'm asking you is, if your mobile phone, you go to slido.com, uh, you put in the, the code TTI 2023, and uh, there will be three questions for you. Um, so, I really hope that you can do it on your mobile phone and then help me in the, in the, in the presentation. And uh, it's going to be interactive as long as you participate. Um, so, the first thing that we wanted to do was to clarify what direct sensor to satellite really means. Uh, we have been having a lot of questions uh, at the booth, people coming and say, hey, uh, can I use it? Do I need a gateway? Do I need a, a concentrator? Um, sorry? Ah, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. So the code is dash TTI 2023. You are all good? Can I move forward? Yes? OK, thank you. Uh, so direct to satellite, uh, what it means. Um, usually, when people come to the booth and ask the first time how that really works, the first thing that they ask is, do I need a gateway? Uh, the answer is no. You don't need a gateway. You don't need any sort of terrestrial infrastructure to be able to connect our module uh, to the satellite. What direct sensor to satellite really means is an object equipped with a modem that can talk directly to the satellite. Independently if the satellite is LEO, GEO, or whatever constellation you're actually considering. It's a direct communication. can be directional, bidirectional, real-time, non-real-time, but it's really an object that communicates directly to the, to the satellite. And this is the whole discussion we're going to, to go through today is only direct to satellite. All the other use cases, we have your concentrators or gateway on the ground, that's not for us. Just, just to be very clear on the, on the, you know, on the content we are talking about. Um, so, and here is the first question. Um, and the question is, have you tried a direct to sensor to satellite solution uh, to date? The answer is simple, yes or no. Uh, so the poll will be live. And then I'll use your answers to drive considerations and move forward in the presentation. We've been getting bad internally in the office. <laughs> what would be the percentage of no? So we'll see if uh, we were wrong or right. OK, doesn't move. Somebody else missing? Still voting. OK. Uh, can you move forward? Still people clicking? No? OK. 69 to 31, uh, that's somewhat what we predicted. Um, the majority of the people will say no. Um, and we, you know, what are the common concerns that we've been uh, talking about in the, in the past like, about 10 months since we launched commercially the service? Uh, one very key question is money, how much it costs. Um, usually people are, that are embracing today satellite, or have been embracing satellite, uh, have the experience that it's very expensive. Uh, 
is complex. The integration of the satellite is not easy. Uh, you need to be experienced to be able to use the technology. You need a large antenna. You need to point. If you have a remote site, you need batteries, solar panels. It's complex. Uh, and then the ecosystem. Uh, in an environment that is not standardized or where proprietary solutions are actually the solutions that you see the most, um, you don't have a lot of you know, variety of uh, devices as you see today you know, in, in, these, uh, in these rooms. Um, so what has been our response uh, to, these, to these problems? Um, we have been putting in the market a very disruptive pricing model. Um, we, we have been scanning what's out there. Uh, we, we know exactly where the competitors stand, and we know that we have the, the dollars at this point in time of our service are not an issue anymore. Um, the same goes for um, complexity. When you work with property technology, you have issues in explaining people how to use it, how to integrate it. We made a choice to follow standards. And at the time when we started uh, two years back, um, we've been scouting what was out there. Um, and it turned out that LoRa was the chipset that would work out of the box. So we went to Semtech. We asked at the time the LR1110. We've been testing in the 2.1 gigahertz, which is the spectrum we use. And uh, surprisingly, we didn't need to modify anything because the chipset was working straight away, which obviously reduces a lot the time that it takes to bring to market uh, devices. Uh, and then the other portion is make it simple for people. Um, so today, if you go and uh, get one of our evaluation kits, the only two things that we ask people to do is be proficient in using embedded programming and be proficient using cloud programming. If you can do that, you can forget about LoRa and you can forget about satellite. Because at the end of the day, the people just need to do an application and need to send and receive data. Um, and we have, uh, it's our job to make sure that you know, all the rest is totally hidden and not even a, a problem for them. Um, so, and here is the second question. Um, considering what you've been listening, uh, obviously the natural question is, are you planning to use uh, direct to sensor satellite in this in the next six to 12 months. Can be 18, can be 24, doesn't matter. We had just to give you a reference in time. Um, okay, still voting. Okay. 69. So still, huh? I didn't get. We did? Ah, minimum, yeah. I don't know how much it was before. I didn't check. <laughs> huh? 70. Okay. Still somebody needs to click? OK, it's 50-50, OK? Um, and it was, we were kind of expecting uh, people being a bit cautious and not really understanding why they should be using uh, uh, direct-to-sensor satellites. So, um, and here we are talking from experience uh, after you know, um, talking to a lot of you and other people in the past, uh, in the past year. Um, Agritech is, uh, is a sector that has been picking up uh, very quickly. Uh, I think if you go to the Wall of Fame, um, you'll see at least two devices that are, uh, have been engineered in, you know, in the past six months uh, for Agritech. Uh, one is uh, Dale's LandNet to do um, soil moisture uh, measurements. And the other one is um, 
used for uh, beehives uh, uh, monitoring. Um, so, and there is more to come. Uh, so we believe that Agritech has a lot of potential, especially because you, you don't need to, you know, to ask the farmers to be proficient in, uh, in technology. Uh, you just put the sensor there and, uh, and you forget it. Um, environmental monitoring, uh, this, is, uh, this is growing as well. Uh, we are all very well concerned about climate change, how you monitor glaciers, uh, rivers, um, uh, um, you know, uh, earth and, and especially forest. So we do have people today in board, onboarding the, the technology to do wildfire detection, for instance. Uh, there is one of the devices on the wall, uh, Forest Guard, you can see and check it out. Driad as well is using us. So there is, there is, a, there is a, lot of, uh, a lot of interest in, in that respect. Um, the other one is um, critical infrastructure monitoring, whether we're talking about railway, uh, utilities, roads, bridges. This is all kind of long and skinny infrastructure where if you need to deploy a terrestrial network to monitor is technically possible, but commercially not really interesting. Um, and there, having a direct sensor to satellite is a plus because you can just have sensors, uh, you know, um, deploy them, maybe solar panels, small solar panels, very effective, uh, you know, for uh, energy harvesting, and, uh, and then you are good to go. Um, and again, if you go on our wall of fame, we have uh, another, uh, another device that is just uh, doing, is used for uh, monitoring infrastructure uh, from Proesis, which is capable of detecting vibrations, uh, whether this is, you know, uh, an electric uh, uh, mast or, or other type of assets. And then the last, uh, the last portion that we see really coming up very strongly is anything that is around tracking, whether we are tracking uh, um, assets, uh, goods, or people. And I think that there will be a nice demo from uh, uh, APIK on this, on this, uh, on this end, uh, also, here, also here using satellite. So uh, we understand that you might be very cautious on why I need to use satellite, but um, you need to think about the technology as a complement to what you're using today. Um, it can be for coverage, uh, it can be for quality of service, uh, it can be for a variety of reasons. It's not, you should not only think about uh, why do I need to onboard another technology um, that I'm, I don't really know if I can use it. Um, so, you know, trying to bring you understanding of what is the advantage of using these, these technologies, uh, ourselves, uh, EcoStar Mobile, uh, today we are bringing to market uh, a modem. Um, we did it because we, we have to help people in onboarding the technology, we need to give you the tools to make it easy. Um, so we are not hardware manufacturer, but we are taking steps in making your life easier. Uh, to that end, we also established the marketplace. So if you go on our website, you'll see uh, a, a number of devices that are coming to life. Uh, we came in today, uh, this morning, that we are only six on our marketplace, seven. Uh, and this morning, there are partners turning up, and uh, if you go on our booth, there are additional three, four devices on the table that are not yet listed. Um, so it's, uh, it's amazing how quickly people are picking up. Um, and this morning, you saw from Vinke uh, the new concept of the generic node uh, that they just built in a matter of few weeks, uh, directly connected to the thing stack. Uh, and that's really the, the fourth pillar that we, we want to you know, push to you is we are integrating our network into existing ecosystems. Uh, the Think Industries platform is one of them. And today, if you go and, and you get the generic, um, the, the generic node, you'll see data coming from satellite that are into your platform as it will be through your terrestrial network. So we are taking steps very clearly. Uh, and we are not stepping here. There will be more to come uh, announced at the right point in time. Uh, and we are continuing to push. That does not mean that you cannot, if you are a, you know, a critical infrastructure customer, you are not able to get it to your private cloud, for instance. Uh, it it only, always depends on what the customer wants. 
but the message is we are really making satellite and, uh, you know, uh, and LoRa easy for you. You eventually don't even need to understand the technology and you just need to implement your own application. Um, so after listening to what I told you, uh, you know, it's short time, so clearly we would love to talk for <laughs> much longer, but uh, we need to grasp from you, you know, key messages. So, uh, we, and here is a not yes or no, is uh, you need to type in uh, once uh, your, your feedback and what is, you know, your, your key takeaway from today. Uh, can be this talk, uh, can be the discussion you had uh, with uh, Vinke uh, after the presentation this morning. Um, as you coming to our booth, so is, uh, is really, you know, your perception uh, up, to, up to now on, on the topic of satellite IoT. And this is done in a way that you can hopefully take a picture and take it back to your, you know, to your company. If you need to go back and say, hey, I need to work on satellite, but I need to figure out the budget to work on it. So, you know, you might get inspired from what other people are, are thinking about. Thirty-three, so we should be getting to seventy before we stop it. So, <laughs> but we have time. We are not that much far away from the end. So, um, forty-one, still typing. Get steady, red launch. Cost. Boring. Oh, interesting. Why is boring? <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Doable, yes. Beer later. 44, so I don't think people are still willing to get on. Five typing. Okay, so let's do the following. We are through. One more typing and then we, we move forward. Okay, well, another emoticon with uh, logs. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, to conclude, um, we are real. Uh, you have been listening probably to a lot of uh, promising uh, speeches, uh, nice slides. Uh, just go out and check. Our, our hardware is available for, uh, uh, for, for purchase. You can go through our onboarding program. You can get going with, uh, with devices in a matter of a few days. And then uh, you, you can start and experiment uh, satellite IoT. Um, I don't need to convince you longer. If you just have doubts, come to talk to us. Uh, but otherwise, we are, we are there and uh, we are ready to go.